Welcome to the top of the morning show. It's your girl ZZ from the D. I hope that you rested well last night and I hope you're off to a great hump day. Today is Wednesday. Today is our third day. We are breaking down the five love languages. Today we're going to talk about love language number three, which is receiving gifts. Here we go. And remember, this is from Dr. Gary Chapman's book, The Five Love Languages, How to Express Heartfelt Commitment to Your Mate. I was in Chicago when I studied anthropology by means of detailed anthropologies. I visited fascinating people all over the world. I went to Central America and studied in advanced cultures of the Mayans and Aztecs. I crossed the Pacific and studied tribal people of Melanesia and Polynesia. I studied the Eskimos of the Northern Tundra and Aboriginal Aeneas of Japan. I examined the cultural patterns surrounding love and marriage and found that in every culture I studied, gift giving was a part of the love marriage process. Anthropologists are ignored by cultural patterns that tend to pervade culture, and so was I. Could it be that gift giving is a fundamental expression of love that transcends culturally barriers? Is the attitude of love always accompanied by the concept of giving? Those are academic and somewhat physiological questions, but the answer is yes. It has profound practical implication for North American couples. I took an anthology field trip to the island of Dominica. Our purpose was to study the culture of the Caribbean Indians, and on the trip, I met Fred. Fred was not a Caribbean, but a young black man of the 28 years old. Fred had lost a hand in a fishing dynamite trip accident. Since the accident, he could not continue his fishing career. He had plenty of available time, and I welcomed his companionship. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's early morning, y'all. I welcomed his companionship. We spent hours talking about his culture. Upon my first visit to Fred's house, he said to me, Mr. Gary, would you like to have some juice? To which I responded enthusiastically. He turned to his younger brother and said, go get Mr. Gary some juice. His brother turned, walked down the dirt path, climbed a coconut tree, and returned with a green coconut. Open it, Fred commanded. With three swift movements of the machete, his brother uncorked the coconut, leaving a triangular hole at the top. Fred handed me the coconut and said, juice for you. It was green, but I drank it, all of it. Because I knew it was a gift of love. I was his friend, and to friends you give juice. At the end of our week together, as I prepared to leave that small island, Fred gave me a final token of his love. It was a crooked stick, 14 inches in length, which had been taken from the ocean. It was silky smooth from pounding upon the rocks. Fred said that the stick had lived on the shores of Dominica for a long time and he wanted me to have it to remind him of a beautiful island. Even today, when I look at the stick, I can almost hear the sound of the Caribbean waves, but it is not as much of a reminder of Dominica as it is a reminder of love. A gift is something you give and you can hold in your hand and say, look, he was thinking of me or she remembered me. You must be thinking of something or someone to give a gift. The gift itself is a symbol of that thought. It doesn't matter whether it costs money. What is important is that you thought of them. And it's not the thought implemented only in the mind that counts, but the thought expressed in actually securing the gift and giving it to the expression of love. Mothers remember the days their children bring a flower from the yard as a gift. They feel loved, even if it was a flower they didn't want picked. From early years, I'm sorry, I got thrown off y'all. From early years, children are inclined to give gifts to their parents, which may be another indication that gift giving is the fundamental to love. Gifts are visual symbols of love. Most wedding ceremonies include giving and receiving of gifts of the ring. The person performing the ceremony says these rings are outward and visible signs of an inward and spiritual bond that unites your two hearts in love that has no end. That is not meaningless theory. It is a verbalizing of a significant truth. 
I'm sorry. I got thrown off again. Ooh, it's a, it's a, ooh, it's a hot morning this morning, right? Ay, 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 ay. Okay, a significant truth. Symbols have emotional value. Perhaps that is even more graphically displayed near the end of a dis- grinning marriage when the husband or wife stops wearing the wedding ring. It is a visual sign that the marriage is seriously in trouble. Once husband said when she threw her wedding ring at me and angrily walked out of the house slamming the door behind her I knew our marriage was in trouble I didn't pick up her wedding ring for two days when I finally did I cried uncontrollably the rings were a symbol of what should have been but lying in his hand and not on her finger they were visual reminders that the ring that symbolized their marriage was falling apart the lovely rings stir deep emotions within the husband visual symbols of love are more important to some people than others that is why individuals have different attitudes towards wedding rings some never take the ring off after the wedding others don't even wear a ring band this is another sign that people have different primary love languages if receiving gifts is my primary love language i will place great value on the ring you give me i will wear it with great pride I will also be greatly moved emotionally by another gift that you give through the years. I will see them as expressions of love. Without gifts as visual symbols, I may question your love. Gifts come from all types of people in all types of sizes, colors, and shapes. Some are expensive and others are free. To the individual with primary love languages, receiving gifts, the cost of the gift will matter little unless it is greatly out of line from what you can afford and if a millionaire gives only one dollar regularly the spouse may question whether that is expression of love but when family finances are limited a dollar gift may speak a million dollars worth of love here's a pearl for you if your love for your spouse primary love language is receiving gifts you could become a profit gift giver in fact, it's one of the easy of love's languages to learn. That's just, this is facts. We love gifts, don't we? We love giving gifts and well, most of us love giving gifts, but we love getting gifts too, right? I think we do. So let me leave you with these 10 bullets. Number one, make a list of all of the requests your spouse have made over the past few weeks. Select one of these each week and do it as an expression of love. Number two, Cut out some heart-shaped note cards and print the following. Today, I will show my love for you. Bye. And then complete the sentence with the following. Mowing the lawn, vacuuming, mopping the floor, washing dishes, taking the dog for a walk, cleaning up outside, etc. You get the idea. Put what matters to you or your spouse in there. And give your spouse a love note accompanied by the act of service every three days for a month. Number three, ask your spouse to make a list of 10 things he or she would like for you to do during the month. Then ask your spouse to prioritize them, numbering them one through 10, with one being the greatest, 10 being the least important. And use the list to plan for your strategy for a month of love. Get ready to live with a happy spouse. Number four, while your spouse is away, get the children, if you have some, to help you with acts of service for your wife or your husband. When he or she walks in the door, join the children, if you have some, and shouting, surprise, we love you. Then share your act of service. Number five, what one act of service has your spouse nagged about constantly? When not decided by you to do it, why not decide to do it by doing that one thing that she or he is nagging? I guess most people say the wife is nagging and if you choose to do it as an expression of love it is worth more than a thousand notes number six if your spouse requests for acts of services come across as nags or put downs try writing them in words that would be less offensive to you share this revised wording with your spouse for example honey i love you so much you are a hard-working woman or you are a hard-working man and i really appreciate you i'd love to thank you in advance for doing what you do before Thursday when Mary and Bob come for dinner. Whoever. Put those names in there. If you have a dinner reservation with friends that's coming over or you're going to someone's house. And if that's not the case, you could fill that in. Your spouse will be probably responded with a 
let me get this done because they can't wait right number seven do some major acts of service like washing the dishes cooking a meal right you know straightening up the house and post a sign to your spouse to whatever your spouse name is with love and sign your name right number eight if you have more money than time hire someone to do the acts of service that you know your spouse would love to have done that she or he does not have time to do such as perhaps cleaning the house cutting the grass washing the car you know laundering the clothes um even something a spa day we appreciate those pedicure manicure session you get it Number nine, ask your spouse to tell you the daily act, a service that would really speak love to her or him. That might include such things as putting your dirty clothes in the hamper, because some of y'all like to throw y'all stuff on the floor. Getting the hair out the sink, because some of y'all like to leave hair in the sink, and you might not even notice it, but trust me, your spouse does. Hanging up your clothes at the end of the night, instead of laying them on the dresser or laying them on the chair in your room if you have one. Laying them on the end of your bed if, you know, some people do that. Some of y'all lay them on the floor. How about hanging them up? Preparing the meal. If your spouse is the one that always cooks, how about you prepare dinner? And if you're not a cooker, order their favorite dish from a carryout spot that you know they love. Seek to work these little things into your daily schedule. You see, you remember the little things really do mean a lot. And then number 10, periodically ask your spouse, if I could do one special act of service this week, what would you request? If possible, do it. And watch how your spouse's love tank fills up. These are all great examples of ways that we can show the act of giving a gift and receiving a gift. It de- it truly depends on you. I love how Dr. Chapman laid some ideas out there for us. But you got to be mindful. Sometimes it's not the act of service is laid out there for us. It's more of the act of service that we need to lay out there. Right. And it's giving gifts, receiving gifts. If we know that that's our spouse's significant love language, then I would think we would want to do it. Now, that's just my opinion. I know that that is a love language that my husband and I both share. We both enjoy receiving gifts. So neither one of us have a problem with sharing, expressing, giving one to the other. We don't. I don't know what your love language is. I don't know what your spouse's love language is, but I'm pretty sure you do. And if you don't know, this is a great book to read together. That way you could discover what his love language is, what her language is, and heck, even what your language is, your love language is. Remember, the five love languages are words of affirmation, quality time, receiving gifts, acts of service, and physical touch. Tomorrow... We will be covering love language number four, which is truly acts of service. Today's show was brought to you by TT from the D. I hope that you enjoyed the top of the morning show. I hope that you're learning something from this book. I hope that you will continue to love on your spouse no matter what, whatever that looks like for you. Have a great day and I'll see you tomorrow.